Here are five huge lies about low back pain and sciatica that you probably believe. So let's get you the right information so you can heal your back pain and reclaim the active life you deserve. You've probably been told you need to fix your core strength or that you need to avoid rounding your spine because it'll make a disc herniation worse. Or maybe you've been told disc herniations don't heal. But when we actually look at the research on chronic low back pain and sciatica, we find that none of those things are true, including all of the other things I'm going to tell you in today's episode. Speaking of research, when's the last time that you saw somebody who's claiming that they know what causes low back pain actually cite their freaking sources? Personally, I believe research matters. So I'm going to show you the research. My name is Dr. Anthony Davis, and I teach people with chronic low back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life that they love using evidence-based holistic therapy like exercise, education, nutrition, sleep management, and stress management. And I can show you how to do the same. Now it's time to sort out myth from fact so you understand and you have the best information so you can heal from your back pain. So here are five huge lies about chronic low back pain and sciatica that you will never be fooled into believing again. Myth number one, that disc herniations never heal and that they only get worse. This right here is a disc herniation. Yes, sometimes they can herniate. It's a little swelling on the spine and it can happen right next to a nerve root and it can cause a lot of pain if it does pinch on that nerve and you get shooting pain down the leg. Definitely painful. But it's a lie to think that these little guys can turn into this. This is totally unrealistic. This is a freaking balloon. But you might have been told that if you round your spine and you do too much activity, that those disc herniations will get worse. And worse. And worse until they freaking pop. That's insane. That does not happen to discs. Discs are like really tough chewing gum in a, in a center of a car tire, right? The outer ring of a disc is actually really strong, tough, fibrous stuff, the annulus fibrosus, and the inside, the nucleus pulposus, is not like the balloon at all. It's actually really tough, like chewed up chewing gum, okay? Your discs do not have that sense of fragility. In fact, they are very tough, rubbery stuff. And as it turns out, most disc herniations heal. In fact, 66% of disc herniations heal. And the worse the herniation is, actually the more likely it is to completely heal on its own. Upwards of 96% of disc sequestrations heal on their own spontaneously within about a year. Oh, and as for that whole bending forward and making the disc herniation worse thing? We actually have evidence that bending forward allows the disc to be sucked back in to the spine. So it actually heals your spine to encourage bending in both directions. Myth number two, I need to get an MRI in order to diagnose my pain. And reason number two and a half is that the stuff on my MRI needs to change Otherwise, I'll have pain forever. Both of those are myths. Both of those are not true. As tempting as it is to get an MRI and say, oh, there's a disc herniation, better do something about it. The truth is that most low back pain and sciatica is what we call nonspecific, meaning that it is impossible to identify a single cause, a single structural cause of your pain. Even if we do see a disc herniation, a disc bulge, or stenosis of the spine, depending on the severity, it's impossible to say that that one thing is causing all of the pain. And if you do fall into the trap of belief believing that that one thing is responsible for all of your pain, then the only possible solution is to get rid of that thing, which means surgery. And I'm assuming that you probably don't want surgery, right? Oh, and speaking of surgery, if you get an early and unnecessary MRI for low back pain or sciatica, you are 12 times more likely to have surgery than somebody who did physical therapy instead and did not get an MRI. And as for the thing on the MRI needing to heal in order for you to get out of pain, that's not true either. Because what we see, there was a study where we looked at 3,000 110 people with no low back pain whatsoever. You would expect that these people have an MRI that looks really good, that their spine looks very healthy, but that's not true at all. People with zero pain, most of them have disc herniations, disc bulges, uh, disc degeneration, which is osteoarthritis. They have things like stenosis, scoliosis, spondylolisthesis, you name it. So you do not need to fix that thing in order to get out of pain. We know this because people are walking around all the time with these things in their spines, and yet they do not have pain. Now, that's not to say that the MRI doesn't matter at all or that the structure in your spine doesn't matter at all. It's just that 
that that structure in your spine, like a disc herniation, only slightly increases the chances of you having pain at some point. And so you don't need to worry about the MRI unless you have major red flag symptoms, which your doctor would have already told you about. Lie number three is that if I have pain, that means something is damaged. Or another way of saying that is that lie number three is the belief that hurt equals harm. Now that's not true. Pain is weird. I mean, really weird. Pain is an experience, not a sensation. There was a study where they looked at people with hand pain and they had them look at their hand through binoculars. And one group of people looked in the binoculars to make their hand appear really big. And the other group of people flipped the binoculars to make their hand look really tiny. And they asked both groups, scale of one to 10, how bad does your hand hurt? And they found that the people whose hand looked really big experienced worse pain. So we were subject to a visual illusion making the pain worse. You can literally take two people, put one person in a red room and put the other in a blue room. And the people in the red room experience more pain and the people in the blue room experience less pain. In another weird study, they put people in a fake headache machine. They basically put a device on people's head with a bunch of wires. And they said to these people, oh, hey, by the way, um, this device may cause a headache. And then they turned around and messed around on a device with a bunch of knobs and buttons on it. And not only did the people who were told, hey, by the way, this might cause a headache, they did in fact have a headache. Oh, and this is a fake machine, by the way. Totally, it's not turned on, no electricity running through the machine fake machine, but they reported headaches anyway. Not only that, but when the people running the test put their hands on a giant knob and turn the knob up, people with a fake headache machine reported a worse headache. Now this can make people think that pain is all in your head. And if you're told that pain is in your head, you might be thinking that pain isn't real, but that's not true at all. Pain technically doesn't happen until it reaches the brain and becomes a conscious experience. So in that sense, technically all pain is in the brain, but that doesn't mean you can just think your way out of it, right? It still has physical consequences and you still need to address it holistically. Mind, body, environment. So we need to look at mental health, exercise, stress, nutrition, people, places, things, sleep. You need a holistic approach. And it's like I do with my clients in my Beyond Back Pain program. I put together a holistic program where they do exercise, but they also do stress relief um, meditations, breath work, self-massage. For many of my clients, I help them with nutrition and sleep and time management because all of these things are just as important for managing chronic pain. Oh, by the way, I made a masterclass on that if you ever want to check it out. It's in the description. Now here's that huge lie, number four, that you have a bad back and you will have pain forever. Well, unless you're dead like Fred here, nothing is forever. So get that language out of your head. Stop telling yourself that you have a bad back. In fact, you are actually making your back pain worse by talking shit about your own back. You've heard of a placebo, right? You take a fake treatment and it makes you feel better because you believed that it was gonna make you feel better? Well, the opposite of that is a nocebo, where you have a negative influence on your health, somebody tells you that there's something broken or damaged about you, and because you believe you're going to get worse, you get worse simply because of your belief. So if you tell yourself that you have a bad back, you might actually start to have one. And it's not just because of your belief, it's because your beliefs have a direct impact on your activities. And if you believe your bad is quote unquote bad, right? If you, have, if you think you have a bad back, then you are going to avoid activity. You're going to avoid exercise and strengthening your spine. And because of that fear, your body is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker over time. And that's going to lead to disability because we know from research that fear of pain is more disabling than pain itself. And we also know that if you develop self-efficacy, a belief in yourself and optimism around your health and the ability to help yourself through exercise, stress management, pain, coping mechanisms, etc., sleep, nutrition, you name it, then you are going to have better function and pain and less disability and a shorter path to recovery. Short story, don't panic because the truth is most people in their lifetime will have an episode of low back pain. And yet the vast majority of those people, they will recover given enough time. You are not doomed to live the rest of your life in pain. And big lie number five is the postural boogeyman, that your low back pain is caused by bad posture or that your joints are 
out of alignment or that you've got a weak core and you just need to strengthen your abs in order to heal from back pain. But the truth is none of these things correlate with pain. When we actually look at the research, we find that core stability is kind of useful short term, but it's definitely not a long term solution and it does not predict future injury. So it's basically overrated. We find that bad posture actually has no predictive value to predict who will or will not have low back pain. So you can stop worrying about it. Or I'm sure you've seen these videos with it where they say, oh, you've got it. So your psoas connects from your lumbar spine down to the uh, femur. And if this psoas muscle is too tight, it pulls your spine forward. It pulls you out of alignment and blah, blah, blah. Well, again, we've got research on this and we find that lower cross syndrome and having tight hip flexors and weak glutes actually does not predict whether you're gonna have low back pain at all. Now, yes, sometimes some of these things will have some impact for some people for a short time. I'm not saying they never ever matter for anybody Ever. What I'm saying is that you're missing the forest for the trees. You're getting obsessed with the tiny little details that barely matter instead of zooming out and looking at the big picture. And if you get obsessed with looking at your posture and your alignment and your joint positioning and your muscle tightness, you're in rehab purgatory. You're on a freaking hamster wheel. You're never going to get better because it's an unachievable goal. It's an impossible goal. Every single person has bad posture. Every single person has imbalances. Every single person has asymmetries. And it is literally impossible to fix them because it is down to your bones and joint shape. You cannot fix it. It's impossible. Perfection is unachievable. And it doesn't matter anyway. We don't see any correlation between posture alignment, muscle imbalances, and pain. So it really doesn't matter very much. So instead, focus on a holistic vision of your life, right? Look at exercise holistically. Are you doing any exercise? Stop worrying about doing the perfect exercise and just do something that feels achievable but also difficult. Zoom out, look at stress management, and look at sleep. Are you getting enough sleep? Look at nutrition. Are you eating crappy junk food? Look at the people, places, things that you surround yourself with and see if those can have an influence on your life. And if you can modify those facts. Okay, so today you learned five big lies that you probably used to believe about low back pain and sciatica. Myth number one, that disc herniations never heal and they only get worse. And if you bend your spine, they're definitely going to get worse. That is not true. Movement is medicine. Motion is lotion. Number two, that you must have an MRI in order to properly diagnose your pain. And that if the stuff that you see on the MRI does not go away, you will be in pain forever. This is not true. The vast majority of disc herniations heal on their own within about a year. And even if they don't, it still doesn't have to be the end of the world because most people are walking around with stuff on their MRI and yet they have no pain. Myth number three, that if you have pain, it must mean that something is damaged. That if it hurts, that must be causing harm to my body. And what we found was that pain is extremely weird and it can be subject to your beliefs and experience and visual illusions illusions and all kinds of trickery. So we need to account for those aspects of our life, our mental health, our beliefs, and our expectations when it comes to pain management. We need to think holistically. Myth number four, that you just have a bad back and you are doomed to have low back pain or sciatica for the rest of your life. We came to understand that the language that you use to yourself actually makes your low back pain worse or better, and that if you call it bad or I have a fragile back, that is going to lead to fear and disability and deconditioning, and we see that fear of pain is more disabling than pain itself. Myth number five is that low back pain and sciatica are caused by bad posture, bad alignment, muscle tightness, and a weak core. This postural boogeyman doesn't exist. Yes, some of those things sometimes matter for some people for a short time, but they do not sum up the complexity of low back pain. And even if low back pain, let's say that weak core, that a weak core is an influencing factor for you. Even if that's the case, you still need to zoom out, look at the big picture, treat yourself holistically, look at your mental health, your stress, your sleep, your nutrition, your whole life. 
and then you'll actually have a solution. So don't get stuck on the rehab purgatory hamster wheel of death and with unachievable goals because everybody is asymmetrical and you'll never fix it completely. Instead, focus on the big picture. Get strong. Get your body physically stronger and more resilient. So you might be wondering if these things aren't causing my low back pain and these things don't work to fix it, then what is causing my back pain and what do I do to fix? You probably want to know what the real root cause of low back pain and sciatica is. So if that's the case, be sure to watch the next video in this series and I'll see you there.